Good morning. So we'll continue the discussion on pile foundations. Now in the previous video we had briefly discussed the classifications of pile foundations based on the materials used, the load transfer mechanism, the replacement of the displacement method, the applications, etc. Now based on the load transfer, like I said, the pile foundations can be N-bearing or friction pile. Now N-bearing pile if you can make out from this picture, simply means that you have the pile foundation here and it's resting on hard rock or strong soil. So the load that you apply from top will be transferred predominantly to the layer at which it rests. So there's an axial transfer of load. Whereas in friction pile, it doesn't rest on a hard soil or a hard strata. So essentially, it takes the load by friction. So when you have load applied onto the pile, of course by superstructure, the load is transferred along the circumference of the pile and it's not actually transferred to, to, to the hard strata. So N-bearing piles, like I said, they transmit the load at the tip to a hard strata and it may pass through a weak layer and it usually is designed to rest on rock or hard soil and it's chosen only if hard strata is available at a reasonable depth which means you can't actually dig the soil or install the pile more than a depth that's economical for the design so let's assume that the rock is available at not 10 meter, not 20 meter, not 30 meter, but let's say at 60 meters and your structure is just two stories high. So you don't have the luxury of installing a pile 50 meters below the ground level just to hold the load of a two story structure. So you may have to resort to friction pile in such cases. So in short, end bearing piles are considered or chosen if the hard strata is available at a reasonable depth. And the load QU is equal to QP. QU is a load which is acting on the pile, and QP is a tip resistance. The second one is, like I said, friction pile. It transmits the load through the circumferential friction and the friction in sand and its cohesion in clay. Friction is a term that we usually use for sand soil or cohesionless soil, and cohesion is a term that we use for clay soil. That's also called as a floating pile and it is chosen only if the hard strata is not available at reasonable depth. And QU in this case is not equal to QP but equal to QS. QS is a load taken at the circumference. So these two classifications of course are theoretical. We rarely come across a purely and bearing pile and a purely frictional pile. Everything is usually a combination of end bearing and frictional pile, which means QU is equal to QP plus QS, with variations in the load taken or the share taken for QP and QS. The load carrying capacity of pile can be estimated using different methods. It includes static method dynamic formula, in-situ penetration test, and pile load test. Now the static method, you arrive at the ultimate failure load, QU, which was defined or mentioned in the previous slide, as a sum of QS and QP. So QU is the ultimate load acting on the pile foundation, and it is shared by QS and QP. Like I said, QP is a tip resistance or end bearing and QS is a side friction or skin friction which acts along the length L over the circumference. So fundamentally, QU is equal to QP plus QS. But QP is a point or tip resistance. QS is a shaft resistance. Now QP, capital letter QP, is equal to small QP multiplied by AP. And QS, capital QS, is equal to FS into AS. We'll discuss what these terms are. QP, small QP, is a bearing capacity of the soil at the pile tip, usually in kilonewton per meter square. 
AP is the area of the pile tip, which is usually again in meter square. FS is the average skin friction or adhesion along the shaft. Again, in kilonewton per meter square. AS is the effective circumferential area of the pile shaft. Again, in meter square. So you, when you once you multiply QP and AP kilonewton per meter square into meter square, you will get capital QP in kilonewton. And you multiply FS in kilonewton per meter square and AS in meter square, you will get capital QS in kilonewton. So essentially, it says that QU is shared by QS and QP. It depends on the soil, if it's purely frictional soil or was well, a case where you don't have a hard strata, QU will mostly be taken by QS. And when the pile is resting on a hard strata, QU will mostly be taken by QP. Now, what each terms are, like I said, QP is the bearing capacity of the soil at the pile tip. It is found using the equation, the bearing capacity equation that we have discussed for round or square footing depending on the pile geometry. AP is the area of the pile tip. Again, it depends on the geometry of the pile tip, whether it's circular or square or any other shape. AS is the effective circumferential area of the pile shaft. Again, it depends on the geometry of the pile tip. It's pi dl when it's circular or cylindrical pile. And AS will be equal to 4 times, I mean, at least the perimeter multiplied by the length when you have any other shape. Let's say a square piles. FS is average unit skin friction or adhesion along the shaft. Now, that depends on whether the soil is clay or sandy or cohesive and cohesionless. So, FS, like I said, needs a bit more explanation is the average unit friction or adhesion along the shaft. And for sand or cohesion less soil, F is given as K sigma V tan delta. And for clay or cohesive soil, F is will be equal to alpha into C. Again, each terms are defined here. K is a lateral earth pressure coefficient. Sigma V is the effective vertical stress at the mid-depth of the pile. Delta is the angle of internal fr interface friction. I'm sorry. Alpha is the adhesion factor. C is the effective cohesion. Now, though these equations look a bit complicated, these are quite simple based on simple physics. Fs means that it is a unit friction in kilonewton per meter square acting along the pile surface and in case of sand delta is the interface friction between concrete and sand so that plays a component in fs whereas in clay fs is not related to delta because you don't have phi there in angle of internal friction for clay is usually zero so you don't have phi what you have is instead is cohesion but that cohesion is soil to soil cohesion alpha term comes into picture when you have soil to pile interaction which means alpha is a reduction factor to accommodate for the interaction between concrete and clay